The fact of the matter is that there is a large percentage of doctors working right now who would not get into medical school if they had to apply this cycle. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Gianluca and I am a final year medical student studying in Canada. Now that's a pretty bold statement that I just made, but it is to paint the picture that medical school admissions here in North America are starting to get way out of hand and we should probably dial it back at some point. Well, let's get to the facts now. Here in North America, medical school admissions are some of the most competitive in the entire world. And even amongst all the other professional programs, law school, dentistry school, optometry school, medical school admissions stand out as some of the most competitive out of all of them. And spoiler alert, it's only getting worse. That's what this video is gonna be about. We're looking at data going back to the 1960s. This was prompted by me being in clerkship, by the way, and speaking with a few doctors who told me in no uncertain terms that they're pretty sure if they had to apply to medical school in this upcoming cycle, there's no way that they would be accepted. And here's the data to go ahead and prove it. Now, before we get started, I would highly appreciate it if you guys just went ahead and smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video, if you wanna see more in the future, and stick around just a little bit. You're all gonna get 10% off to Mem, who is the proud supporter of today's video. Stick around and we'll talk about them in just a little bit. Now, first things first, we need to talk about the number of applicants to medical school every single year. If we go back to 1961, the total number of applicants for that entire cycle was 14,381 applicants for a success rate of 60% at the time. If you applied to medical school in 1961, statistically, you had a 60% chance of getting into an American school which all things considered is actually very, very high. Now, not to age anyone that might be watching this video, but it turns out that 1961 was like 60 years ago at the time of me making this video, which means that any med student that got into medical school when they were around 22 years old would now be around an 82 year old working doctor. And to see an 80 year old doctor still working today is not totally unheard of. I myself know a few doctors in their 70s, late 70s that are still working and just know that the landscape of applying to medical school back in the 60s was totally different than it is today. And we're gonna see that with a few other examples. Now, if we move forward about 20 years, in 1981, there were 36,727 applicants, which means that in only the span of about 20 years, the amount of applicants who applied to medical school doubled. Now the acceptance rate in 1981 was about 47 and a half percent. But if we fast forward another 40 years to 2021, what we're seeing in this most recent cycle is that there were around 53,030 applicants to the medical schools down in the States, which translates to an approximate admissions rate of around 41%, which is 19% lower than it was back in the 60s. And even that, although it's slow, isn't nearly as bad as the admission rates that we're seeing down in Canada, where it's estimated in this most recent cycle that any particular applicant had less than a 20% chance of getting accepted into medical school. Case in point number two, the MCAT. Now I'm willing to bet that the majority of you already knew that the MCAT has been around since 1928, which means that in about seven years, those students writing the MCAT will officially be writing the 100th year anniversary of the MCAT test which is impressive and depressing at the same time, depending on how you look at it. But what I bet you guys didn't know is that the MCAT test only came about in 1928 because of the crazy high attrition rates in American medical schools, where it was estimated that about 50% of everyone entering medical school at the time wasn't able to graduate. And that's why the MCAT came about to kind of screen for who should actually proceed on to medical school. Now, what only some of you might know in addition is that we are currently on the sixth iteration of the MCAT as the test was designed, which means that looking back at scores throughout history is gonna be pretty difficult, but here's what I can tell you for sure. When the 2015 version of the MCAT test came out, it was designed so that a score of 500 meant that you were exactly in the 50th percentile. That is the basis of how the MCAT scoring was originally intended. As it turns out though, as of 2021, a score of 500 is only in the 45th percentile, which means that in only the course of a few years, students have been able to score higher and higher, which means that in order to be average amongst all the other students, you have to do consistently better than you would have had to if you just would have written the test in 2015. And because the MCAT test is still one of the most crucial parts of your entire medical school application, now would be a fantastic time to talk about today's video sponsor, MEM. Now, hopefully at least a few of you have heard of MEM in the past. 
They are an MCAT prep company owned by Kevin Jabal from Med School Insiders. So Kevin reached out not too long ago, which I thought was really cool. And he actually offered for me to try out MEM for myself to see what I thought about the product. Now, the first thing that I really liked about the product is that MEM uses evidence-based study methods to help you get the most out of your MCAT studying. Things like spaced repetition, interleaving, and active recall, which I found are really important parts about studying and doing well on the MCAT test. The second thing that I really like though, is that it uses a combination of sheets and questions that are really high quality so that you don't need to spend hours making flashcards yourself and could focus on hopefully getting the most out of whatever study block you're currently working on for the day. On my channel, I only promote the things that I think might genuinely help people. If you do sign up for MEM, you are going to get a seven day free trial of their product. And then after that, if you want to go ahead with the full membership, you're going to get 10% off with the code in the description below. So thanks so much to MEM for sponsoring today's video. So number of applicants going up every single year. MCAT scores going up every single year. Wonder what's gonna happen with the GPA. Now to all of my soon to be doctor colleagues who got into medicine in 1961, I hate to do this to you, but it turns out that on average, only about 13.5% of them had a GPA that was greater than a 3.6 when they got into medical school, which is absolutely mind boggling compared to today's stats. For reference, many schools here in Canada will not even look at your medical school application unless you have a GPA greater than a 3.7. When you look at my school specifically in 2021, this is McMaster University, it turns out that greater than 96% of all successful applicants had a GPA that was greater than a 3.6. Even in the States, the numbers are still shocking where as of the 2020 to 2021 cycle, it is still expected that greater than 60% of all successful applicants needed to have an overall GPA that was greater than 3.6 in contrast with the 13.5% from the 1960s. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I do understand that the inflated application stats every single year are a direct result of the fact that there are more and more people applying to medical school every single year. And as we have a limited amount of spots and more people trying to fight for that limited amount of spots, the competition just needs to go up as a result. That's just the way that it works. And there's been all kinds of different metrics proposed to try and fight this inflation, like the Casper test, but there's all kinds of problems associated with that at the same time. So I'd love to hear from you guys. What do you think is the solution to this problem that we're seeing? How do we stop this from spiraling out of control? Or do we let it? Is it is that just the way that it's got to be? Do we need to let it get to the point where every single person needs a 4.0 GPA to get into medical school? I don't have the answer for you guys. But I do promise that since I've been here, not a single one of my patients have asked me for my MCAT scores or what my GPA was. They just wanted me to help them or get someone that could help them. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope it was a thought provoking one. I hope you learned some new stuff, maybe some fun facts about the MCAT and MCAT history that you never knew before. Let me know in the comment section below how you guys would go ahead and devise the new acceptance criteria for med schools. If it was up to you, we will see you all in the next one. Everyone take care.